Hey up everyone, welcome to the Cannon All Farm podcast. With us, the Nicholson Brothers Farmers, Rob and Dave. We're two Yorkshire farmers who, along with our dad Roger, brother Rich and the rest of our family, have turned a farm with two sheds and a barn into an award-winning tourist attraction. You've seen us on the telly, live on Facebook, and now we're here with our brand new podcast. Across this series, we'll be looking at the key moments that got Cannon Old Farm to the place we're at today. On today's episode, we're going to be joined by our dad, Roger, and we're going to talk about the early days at Cannon Old Farm. I think my mum told me, when you actually got married, my gran said to my mum, Have you, well, you've got him now. Is that right? Uh, I believe so. In other words, look after him. Yeah. <laughs> so, Dave, what has your week been like? I've been extremely busy on the old JCB, but an interesting job this morning, we sheared the alpacas. And were your customers satisfied with their haircuts? Uh, thinking back to when you sheared one on the programme, I think you did a nice, more of a... Well, the customer would have been happy with yours. This was just all off. You so know. this was a short back and size? It was a really short back and size. Yeah. And there was a little bit of spit flying in all directions, but it's one of the hazards of the job. Well, I think once those alpacas have, have got the, the fleece off, and hopefully we get some summer weather they'll be very happy with the situation yeah i mean we haven't had the hottest you know summer so far you know but the, the alpacas are ready for that sunshine now exactly well you'll be glad to know that i've had a successful mate in this morning really yeah yeah very <laughs> pleased with it uh, aussie horseborn oh. uh, was was the uh, was the person we're talking about right. uh, and it's it's really pleasing to say we're expecting Another fall next year, hopefully. Well, I'm glad you put that into context. Yeah, so we, we've mated um, a miniature donkey, yeah. we've mated some, uh, some, some cows with a bull, and now a Shetland pony as well. So next year's springtime is looking assured. Well, you've got to plan a year ahead, don't you? If you want animals in the, at the springtime, you know, especially if we're filming or not, we need to be prepared. You can only have a successful springtime if you have a successful mating time. Exactly. Um, I mean, our job's a little bit different. You know, we plan our lambings for when the school holidays are on. You know, so visitors can see all the little lambs being born, uh, you know, and they're memories that you keep forever. Yeah. I, I just think that people come to our farm to see baby animals. Yeah. And, um, and, and to make sure we've got them, you've got to put the time into making sure that the, the mood music is right for the, uh, for the breeding season. So I suppose that's what I've been up to this week. And uh, what was Ozzy's mood music? He didn't need any music. He was, <laughs> he, he was a rock star. He's a force of nature, isn't yeah. he? Right, so exciting times this morning. We're gonna get joined by my dad, aren't we? Yeah, looking forward to getting dad on the couch, find out a little bit more about our history, you know, where, where it all started. You know, things that happened before we were even born. So, uh, so yeah, I'm sure he's got loads to tell us. And, uh, and it's always nice to spend time with him. i better move up a bit then. Go on then. Oh, come on, Dad. Come and sit here. Oh, my leg. For those that don't already know, we're delighted to be joined on the couch by our dad, Farmer Roger, the legend that is. Dad? Thank you. Do you want me to reply to that? No. <laughs> <laughs> right, Dad, yeah. we're here today to talk about your arrival at Cannon Hall Farm. Cast yourself back to 1958. The farm was bought at auction, which I can only imagine was a, a, a very exciting day. What are your memories of that day? Well, I wish I could cast myself back to that, that time and, and do it all again, but <laughs> I can't do that. So. Uh, yeah, that, it was a big day. It was all, it was a sale day, and uh, I had to go to school, not mm. thinking a lot about school. Boo! <laughs> <laughs> not thinking a lot about school, and uh, looking towards uh, a quarter to four when the bell would go, and I'd be dashing down into Barnsley uh, to find out what had happened. And this is obviously pre-mobile phones. Everyone now is so connected, aren't they? You, you know exactly what's happening elsewhere in the world, but. But then, you know, an ordinary telephone was, was something that wasn't taken for granted. No, no, I, I was completely in the dark about uh, whether we got the farm or not. So I set off at a, 
a great pace down from the school <laughs> into Barnsley. And you were at Barnsley Grammar School? I was at Barnsley Grammar School, yeah. So and where, you, where did you head then, Dan? Straight down, just past the town hall to where there was a, a little barber's on the, on, the, on the roadside and that's where I'd organised to meet my father. Had you actually already been round the farm for a good look round? Oh, we'd been, we'd been at least half a dozen times, right. at least, yeah. You'd gone round every field. We'd had a good look, we'd had, and uh, every, every time we went, it was a, a, another little magical moment. So, yeah. uh, so you were keen to get it? I was particularly keen to get it because it was a big change from where we were at Wisbredale. I mean, Wisbredale had been a really happy place for me. I'd, I'd, I'd had a really happy childhood, and uh, uh, but this was something different. Uh, the buildings were so much different. It was like a, an adventure just looking around them. The, the word adventure just sprung into my mind then. It must have been a magical, a magical thing to, to experience and to go through. Well, it, it, it was, and so... Uh, down I ran from uh, from school to to find out, and uh, my father's face was, you um, know, non-committal. Did, did he have a poker face? Uh, I don't know about that. Or do you think he was just worried that he spent too much money? <laughs> <laughs> well, he, nowadays it seems like no money at all, but in those days it, it was a lot of money. So, and, and how much was it? Uh, well, I, I learned later. That He'd sort of set himself a, a limit of £7,000 and uh, he hadn't had a bid at £7,000 and so instead of losing it, he just put £100. That was his first bid and he actually got it at £7,100. And what do you think he would have gone to, Dad? Was that the limit or...? Well, I think he'd gone past his limit and uh, I'm not sure. He, 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 it was a little bit of a gambler, uh, and he might have gone again, you never know, but he never told me that. And, and do you think that I get some of my auction fever from him? I, I think you definitely do. Because if I get to an auction, oh, yeah. I, I literally, I, I like to come away winning, and, and my dad's there with his head in his hands, and oh, that's I, enough I'm now, nearly, that's I'm enough. nearly to get my arms around him and stop <laughs> him sometimes. And uh, I'll come home and I'll say, Dad, I've won again. <laughs> you, 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 you know what? We, we went to that Swiss Valley sale, Rob, right? Yeah. And, uh, and he kept on looking at me, and I kept on shaking my hand and said, don't buy it. Kept on right? going. Because it, it, like, it, was, it was a lot of money. We were that, trying to buy ram. a champion ram, though, weren't we? We were, but it, it came at a cost. Hmm. And we know that the people that bought it afterwards, they bought it. There was about five different farmers, weren't they, bought hmm. it together. And we wouldn't have beaten them. Right. You know, and, and if we had, it would have been an awful lot of money. But we did make them pay for the privilege. And we, you, we did. You don't you didn't risk it, though, to run them up. Well, in the end, we went to Sweden, didn't we? And we bought a fine ram, and he's done us a proud, you know, a really good job. Yeah. But I know what he's like. I've seen him bidding, yeah, yeah. and he's terrible. So I've obviously got the genes of my grandfather in terms of auction fever. So take us back then, Dad. You, you met him at the barbers. Did you have hair cut? I don't think I was in air cut mode. Oh, was it just something for the weekend, sir? It was <laughs> <laughs> not in the, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you, Dad? How old were you? I was 15 years old. Oh, well, you get in there, don't you? Yeah, yeah, you get in there. So, uh, no, I, I, don't, I don't remember having a air cut at all. But so why did you meet at the barbers Well, then? the barbers, he was a, my father was a Rotarian. Oh, was his pal? And he was his friend, yes. So, uh, and a good friend as well, so that's that's why that's right. why it happened. So w when did he was he the man from Del Monte? Did, did he say yes? He said mm. yeah. Then he, well, he said yeah fairly quickly. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. he didn't tell, tell me. In, and uh, and how long suspect. then before you shot down to Cannonall Farm to have a look round? That day? No, because it it soon be dark. All oh, right. Yeah. What time of year was it? Well, it, it was April. Right. Yeah. It it was it wasn't a time when it was so light so uh, I'm not sure by the, well, the next day was the, the day we went but uh, in the near future I was up at Cannonall Farm many many times mm. just looking around uh, deciding little things what we were going to do and things like that but after that you see they had to have a sale 
So, oh, uh, right. so you didn't. So then you got the chance to buy the equipment, the, and the, yes. the content, sort yes. of. Yeah, right? yeah. They they always give the the incoming uh, owner a chance to uh, to buy some of the at, at equipment. auction or agreed by yeah, private treaty, right? Uh, yeah. And at the museum already, the the big house had that already been sold at it, that point. It had already been sold about uh, six years earlier, I think. Right. Like so, that. so Canada, uh, so. The Bouncy Council were already running it as a public park. Yes, they were. All, well, I don't think they'd done a lot towards it, but uh, it takes them a while to get into motion, sort of. Yeah. So, a few meetings down the line. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're at a point now where you bought it at auction. Very exciting. How did you? How did your dad feel about it afterwards? You know, once once you got that realization. You know, did you did you set to deciding what you were growing in each field? Did you have plans for for, for the for the dairy herd? You know, what what, yeah. what were your next projects? Well, well, that's stepping forward a, a bit quickly because in the next day, the the person who must have been the last bidder had had second thoughts about it, and he he came in and tried to uh, offer my father a little bit of profit. I think how it much? It won't be much. I don't know uh, for him to take it over and my father then i mean take it uh he wasn't a well man he'd been advised not to go into business again by the doctor and so uh, it made him think about it had he had he gone too far uh, and so there was a little bit of doubt as to whether he might sell it again so really then, you, you got it and then you were in danger yeah, of not having it? Not having it, yeah, yeah. Mm. But anyway, we, we talked about it uh, and he, uh, he made his mind up we were going to make, make a go of it and uh, he said no to the... But yeah. uh, as a young man, Dad, you'd work... After school, you'd, you'd work on the farm, wouldn't you? On a weekend, you'd be working on the farm. Yeah. So he knew what kind of man you were going to grow into if you like he knew uh, that you could take it on well i i i, I hope so anyway yeah yeah, uh, yeah i mean his his sole sole thoughts in that, that i was going to try to take over at wordsbridale but and then having lost almost all the land uh he uh, he was, must have been looking out for somewhere else we're at a point now where you, you've got the farm bought, yeah. he, he's had his wobble, he's decided he's going to stick with it. Yeah. You, you're then at the point where you're deciding what animals to keep, what, what your enterprise is going to look like. Yeah. I suppose you've got stock at the farm at Wusbury Dale to bring across, have you? Or well, was all that sold? Not a lot. Uh, we had not a lot because there, there, there was no land really to turn stuff mm. out onto. So, no, we hadn't got much stock. Uh, we had a bit of equipment and things like that. Uh, but uh, they, they had to have a sale, and they, they organize, they, they, the sale would be organised so that uh, if there's any fixed equipment and stuff like that, uh, we, we could have a chance to, to, to buy some of that. And we, we sort of bought the, uh, the grinder for the, the corn and that, the turnip chopper and things like that. that all, we, we, we bought that as we were there. Was the grinder the same grinder that we knew as kids? Well, it was, if, yeah, just about. I think it was, yeah, yeah, yeah it was quite about. old. Yeah, it was, yeah. you just crushed the we, barley and then we fed it to the cows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You bought some stuff that was here. Yeah. Um, you, you then had to buy some stock. Yeah, yeah. And you, and you set about having a, a milking herd. Uh, well, that was the idea. My father had bought me a He'd bought me a, a heifer, a, a Frisian heifer at the sale. An expensive one. An expensive one. It, it was really expensive compared to... And, uh, and that was to be the foundation cow of this dairy herd, herd that was going to yeah. sweep the world. Well, I don't know about that. But in his mind, it yeah. would hope to be a, a, a yeah. real good cow that would do you well. Yeah. What was that cow called and how did it do? It was called Bowcliffe Gwyneth and she cost 140 guineas. That's a lot. It's a lot when you can consider the price of the farm. Yeah. So, uh, and some were making quite a lot more than that. It, uh, so, uh, 140 guineas, and 
even though she was a nice, good, big cow, she never lived up to her. Instead of being sort of eight to nine gallons a day, she was a five gallon a day cow. So she was bang average, but she was expensive. Yeah, right. yeah. So that was a bad start. What did yeah. you grow? What crops did you grow on the farm? Well, just about everything. We, all, we, we It was a proper mixed farm, like every, every other farm almost around us. Uh, we grew wheat, we grew barley for, for feeding, wheat probably to sell. Uh, we always grew roots, turnips and, and such, and uh, we always grew about eight to ten acres of potatoes, which we used to uh, store and then sell through through the winter. And you'd sell those to people who came here to buy them, or did you have a round, or did well, you sell them to a merchant? fish and chip shops and things like oh, that. Did you? Yeah. But I mean, the, the going back further, back to, to Wordsbridale, uh, my father used to grow potatoes there, so he was well, well used to uh, uh, growing potatoes. And uh, he used to go around Bank End Estate, which was there when we were there. I, I would imagine that would have been part of Bank End Farm at one time. So you'd made an exciting strong start at Cannon Hall Farm. Things were all going well, and then yeah. the, you had the hammer blow of losing your dad. Yeah. That it was uh, a hammer blow indeed, yeah. yeah. I was still at school uh, and I came, came home from school and uh, I was met at the bus because I usually walked home uh, by uh, Eric, Eric Rowe uh, just to tell me that my father had passed away uh, and well I sort of couldn't wait to get back and go, but he said, "Don't, don't go up there. It's you can't do a thing about it. Don't go up there." And so I didn't. Uh, and uh, it was a good man, Eric, wasn't he? It was a, you know, a, a desperately sad time, uh, but it took oh, sort of a whole week for it to hit me and it, it wasn't until the funeral and, and uh, actually burying him that I, uh, it struck me and it, it was a really bad time for me then. It'd take a lot of getting over though, wouldn't it? Well, you know, it, it, a long time. Yeah, it did, but we, we didn't have a lot of time to do that. I suppose at that point, you'd know he won't come in back. Yeah. But, Exactly what I said. Yeah, I said he's gone now, and, and that so, was it. So did you, you know, like Will Rowe and all the rest of them? Did they well rally we, round? Will we, Will Rowe arrived that that night actually? Well, it was evening. It was still still light and such. And, and, and we were living here by then, Dad. Yes, we were yeah. living here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and 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 you know, he said anything you want doing. Just call me. So just to put into context, Eric Rowe was Will's brother. Yeah. And he was, uh, it's someone uh, who worked for you. I want to, Eric worked for me, yeah. yeah. And mm. Will and Will was a, a neighbouring farmer down at Jowett. Yeah, yeah. So without those two, you'd yeah. have been stuffed. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. And Eric, Eric sort of stopped with me while, it, while I was 21 years old. And then he decided to... Uh, to go and work at Pipeworks, and it probably got a, a bit of a rise there. So he stayed as your wingman until he felt that you'd come of age? Yeah, yeah. And then he went on to, to earn money doing a job, because he probably needed more money for his family. Well, yeah, I mean, he had five children, so yeah. uh, it wasn't, you know, that easy. So the Nicholsons and the Rose are intrinsically linked really too. Yeah, they, you they, know, they, without their help, yeah, that's right. we wouldn't have been able to see through, I suppose that was the first crisis, wasn't it really? It, it was, it, yes. Luckily, I mean, Eric had worked here for the estate before. So he, he knew the fields, he knew he, the land. He knew everything yeah. about the place yeah. really, yeah. He knew what you could plough then, you, you know, what, what not to do really, yeah. which well, would save you making a lot of mistakes, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. 
But I'm sure I made a few. Well, we've all yeah. done that. Yeah, yeah. D- did you did you miss him at 21 when he left? Did you miss him? Did you replace him? Did you manage without him? Could you afford to replace him? Uh, well, I I did I did not immediately. I don't think, but I did get to a couple of lads in after that. Not not together one at a time. Yeah. Yeah. But finding someone like him who who had knowledge of the players, no, it yeah. would be difficult to replace yeah. one to them. Yeah, yeah. I bet you got to remember back then, Rob, you, you know, like uh, all those little loose boxes, you know, it was all hand mucking out. Mm. You know, it, it, it took a strong man to, 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 to get all those empty. Yeah. And by the end of winter, they'd have been quite high, wouldn't they? Yeah, they were, they remember, were half, halfway up the I remember door. mucking them out myself. Yeah. And it, 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 it you know, well, he could take his toe. He wanted a strong man, he was a strong boy for a start yeah. anyway. You were glad to get to the bottom of them, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, but when you got to the bottom of that, there, were, there was another, there was another yeah, one yeah. to do. And we, we, we seemed to fill them all up with stock and that sort of thing. So, uh, so you're 21, have you met my mum yet? Oh yes, I'd, uh, I'd already met your mum when uh, I was no, almost 19. But you didn't marry her by 21? No. Well, how old were you? Uh, 22, I think. So you were caught in strongly at 21? Yeah. She knew was the, you knew she was the girl for you? I did by then, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and who lived at the farm at that point? Did any of your sisters live here still? No, or were they all married no, off? no, just my mother and me, that was all. Okay. Yeah. So uh, was, me, was me gran a tough nut for my mother to crack? Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> well, I remember. She, she was a strong woman, wasn't she? Uh, she was, yeah. And, uh, and she thought a lot of you, didn't she? she yeah, absolutely. Uh, I don't think anybody would have been uh, Just the better. right one for her, really. Yeah. <laughs> and was that a stress to you? That was, it, was it so difficult to manage, or did you, did you find yourself having to, you know, coax her along in that direction? Were you a referee? Uh, well, it, it, it was just a gradual process, yeah. uh, and uh, I mean, she wasn't she wasn't awful or nasty to her, but no. but to her just accept that uh, somebody was the right person was, it was difficult a high for her. I think my mum told me when you actually got married. My gran said to my mum, "Have you? Well, you've got him now. Is that right?" <laughs> Uh, I believe so. I'm not. I'm not. I, I didn't but hear it, that. But it won't necessarily said in a. You know, no. it could just be. Well, you've got him. You've now. got him now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, in other words, look after him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you, we're at 21. Soon, soon to be married. Yeah. Right. Soon to be festooned with children. Absolutely. So you've you've had to grow up fairly quickly, haven't you? Uh, yeah. I, I was growing up pretty quickly all my life I think really yeah. I was a bit I was a bit in front of my time right. from that point of view yeah and how was the farm going at this time uh, you know what, 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 what were the enterprises that you were you were running then well we were, we were still virtually where we were when we started with something of everything I was selling all all my sort of produce my lambs at, at Barnsley Market my cattle at Barnsley Market that was the way that things were done then and later on we thought well there must be better ways than 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 that uh, and we devised better ways than that but that was something for the future really right but we but we are, <laughs> we are making a living at this point we were making a living to live uh, to eat and and that sort of thing but there was nothing extra to keep the place in good order and that's quite important as you go on in life. You do need to be making that little bit extra so that you can do those repairs and renewals and things that you need to do to progress. So every time you ran into something with a tractor, it didn't always get mended again quickly? And Well, I, I waited for, uh, for my kids to do that later on. Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> right, think- so you, you, you're going nicely, you're 21. Uh, you married mum at 22. Yeah. Then obviously Richard arrived pretty soon after that. You were just 
a yeah. week or two to the right side of being appropriate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mother did say, "Have you been stealing a match?" <laughs> <laughs> I said, "No, no." no, no. <laughs> and, and when Richard was born, where where were you? Were you next to my mum, holding her hand? Uh, no, no, I, I, I'm not one of those people that think that the fella should be there. I mean, what's the point for a nurse to have somebody fainting out and things like that? Fainting out, okay. Yeah, so no, I wasn't there. I was waiting at, at my sister's uh, for news and uh, I, I sort of kept ringing up and then we, uh, we found out that we'd got a boy. So uh, there was quite a bit of celebration then, and that was to be repeated three times. And, so. when, and when did you go and visit Mum and Richard? Well, the next day. Oh, no. Oh, right. So the, it was at hospital well, as well? Well, they, they, they were visiting times. Yeah. You can't just bob in when you felt like it. And, and I think that was the done thing then, wasn't Definitely, it? Definitely, yeah. was, It wasn't like you oh, were no, uncaring. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't on my own. Nobody no. went to, no, no. You'd only need a bit of a, a, I, a sister there who didn't want anyone distracting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they were a lot stricter in those days. Yeah. And so was it, a, you know, as, as I arrived and David arrived, was, did that add a degree of difficulty to what you were doing? It must have done, bringing three small children up and still trying to keep your jobs on. And Well, it, 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 it did, I suppose, because you had to be dealt with. But on the other hand, they were well worth it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, Good. So I was I was felt uh, that uh, I mean, having kids were really a, a great thing to do and uh, never regretted. So were you born in hospital, Rob? Yeah, Robert was born in hospital. Right. And uh, you you were born at home, and I went up drilling some uh, some barley. So you'd you'd no excuse but to be something like about, did you by then? Well, you got the midwife and and your gran from Halifax were there as well. All right. So I knew she were in good hands. Yeah. And... Uh, what if they were a leg back or something though? Well... <laughs> well <laughs> leave it to the midwife. I, I, think, I think Nurse Bo, the call that I think Nurse she? Bo. Uh, yeah. I think she was the uh, the expert in that line. Yeah. I won't go in up to do And was that. it a good field of barley you drilled? Uh, well, it's a car park now. Oh, is it? That's where you were. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... So that just shows how things have, have Moved changed. Down, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. So you've got three lad. You've got three under four. Yeah. You've got a farm that's taking a bit of running. You've got multiple enterprises. Yeah. Far more than Jeremy Clarkson's got on his farm at the moment. Yeah. Right. So yeah. you've got your hands full. Yeah. You've got the help of mum when she's not looking after us. Did you yeah. have anyone else to help you at that point? Well, uh, Will Will Raw was an, an ever present. I mean, uh, he, he had a he had a, a combine and, and Eric Ellis had a combine, so we weren't sort of short of that. But that first, the first year, uh, we it was a binder, and because we 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 made it in the old-fashioned way. So the first year that you were married, I've, I've heard Mum no, talk not, about not, this. Not married, but no, the first year you were married. Oh yes, right. Yeah, that, I've heard Mum talk about. You, you, the the, it was the second, harvest was so late. Second of October, we'd arranged it so that all the harvest would be over, and we hadn't even started. And it was the fields of barley were black, and when the, when the combine went in, the clouds of dust were yeah, tremendous. Just, it was, so you were lucky to get a window of weather to get it harvested at, yeah, at that we, point. Yeah, we, we, we were, and I got flu as well. So you got flu, retired to bed, <laughs> and my mother were left on binder with Eric Ellis getting harvesting. Well, Ted came over as well. Uncle uh, Ted, mum's brother. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonder she didn't go back with him. <laughs> 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 well, so, the job uh, had to be done, didn't it? Yeah, it did, yeah. And uh, I think it was all that dust that did me in, really. Was it? Yeah, but everybody else managed to, uh, right. to last it out, yeah. On the previous episode, we've talked about opening the farm to the public to make ends meet because we were in a financial crisis. How far into that crisis were we at this point, Dad? Uh, well, it was just a, a struggle. We were still, still living 
within our means, but nothing extra. Uh, the bank manager was getting a, a little bit impatient as well at that was stage. It? Yeah. How often did you meet the bank manager? Too often. Not very often. You weren't no. firm friends then. No, well, there's, some I got on pretty well with, some I didn't really. But, right. Uh, yeah. did, was it an annual thing? Was it uh, more uh, often than that? Usually had an annual visit. Yeah. 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 Well, did they come to the farm then? Uh, no, I went to them, unfortunately, mm. yeah, yeah. Did it feel like going back to school? Something like that, yeah. Uh, it, it, was a, it was a difficult time, but, uh, well, we, we managed and we were determined as well. We were determined to see, see it through. Uh, so at that, at that point, there was no sort of thinking, well, we're not going to, we're not going to really make it, but doubts were there a bit. So, th things like, you know, we, we didn't go on many holidays, we, we, we always, we always had a good table, as my grandma used to say, <laughs> right, we always, we always ate well, but, yeah. but there, there wasn't money for, for reinvestment in the, in the farm, in the way of equipment, no. there, there wasn't money for, for fancy holidays or, or fancy cars, no. so we were just just bubbling we, along the the surface, but not yeah. really prospering. We kind of we went to the seaside for two or three days, didn't we? Yeah, well, you, you yeah. went twice actually. Yeah. You, went, you went once with me and once with your mum. Yeah, uh, and, and, Mum and Rosemary. Rosemary went along, and uh, you probably had a, a really good time in the rock pools and whatever. And, and that's because the farm couldn't be left on its own yeah, one of you right. had to stay so yeah, sure, so a yeah. family holiday away was yeah. difficult to achieve i remember once we went to torquay yeah you must have left someone in charge well, then uh, i can't remember who, who was in charge actually i think brian was working brian for us. maybe with the help of nigel uh, something like that mm. yeah and and they had a burst they rang up to say that a, a pipe had burst did they yeah and where Which was it didn't, it was it was the old one from the uh, from the pond. All oh, right. So. Uh, so it was the council pipe. It, it yeah, yeah. But it was on our, it was in our in our yard. That was the trouble. Right. Uh, anyway, they, they they managed to get over, and we we finished our holiday. We have a trip or two away. We have a, a holiday or two sporadically. Yeah. Thing, things are ticking along. We're all happy. Yeah. We're, we're all living a lovely life. We've got the great outdoors and, and things are going well in lots of ways. But there's always that rumbling lack of money that you know is yeah. a problem yeah. that we, we've tried any number of ways to solve. And yeah. we were all involved in this. You know, we, we were all in it together, yeah. making yeah. plans. What if we do this? What if we do that? But we never quite cracked it until we opened the farm no, to the public. No, no, that, that was the deciding uh, break that we, we needed. Really. How long had that been in your mind, Dad? Uh, well... That trip to Devon? Uh, yeah, because we went to a, an open farm there. Uh, there were only three or four in the country at that time. Pennywell? Pennywell farm, yeah, and it's still there, isn't it? It is. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, a long time ago, then, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, they've been, they're one of the longest acting open farms in a good area from a a tourist point of view, but probably not open in winter. I suppose you look at Pennywell, it, it's in the yeah, tourist attraction in the right area. Yeah. And then you've got us in Barnsley. It's, it's a different thing, but we did have people, you know, on our doorstep going to the park and the gardens. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. so we, we kind of had a good location. Yeah, it, it was. It's, uh, it's an excellent place because it, there's, there's Wakefield, there's Huddersfield, there's Sheffield, there's Leeds, all within striking distance of, of us, and obviously Barnsley and Doncaster, loads of different towns. Dad, that was a real pleasure. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Cannon Hall Farm podcast. We'll be back next time to talk about another important moment from the history of Cannon Hall Farm. And don't forget, follow us on Facebook and you'll get daily videos of everything that's happening on our family farm. And also, follow us on your podcast provider and leave us a rating. Go on, give us five stars if you possibly can. We'll be back next time, but until then, I've been Farmer Rob. 
I've been Farmer Dave, and we'd like to say a big goodbye. See ya. Bye-bye. There's nothing in this. <laughs>